Hi, Jen. Hello. <laughs> so, lesson 22. So, I found that um, the objective really is like an objective, and there's a teaching point that's separate from the objective. So, the students will use their data from Wednesday and Thursday to complete a line plot. That's like the first thing you're going to do. And then the ultimate teaching point is today I want to teach you that you can use fractions in your side lengths to get more rectangles for each perimeter. Um, so, like, that's going to be the drive the home point later on. And what do you mean by that? Drive the home point? No, rephrase the teaching point. Oh, rephrase the teaching point. Um, you said today I want you... Uh, today I want to teach you that you can use fractions in your side lengths to get more rectangles per perimeter. So what's that mean? <laughs> it means that you're going to find that even though we found two rectangles for 10, when we add in fractions, we'll find that we can find an infinite amount beyond that. Awesome. Okay. Um, then there's four, like, Wait, points. do you guys have any questions about oh, that? Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> do you have any questions about that? You understand that? I feel like that's going to blow their little brains. Mm -hmm. that's, okay. We've been adding whole numbers for a year. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to add, we're not actually going to add fractions, but we're going to acknowledge you could add fractions. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. Um, that broke down the lesson into like four main points. They're points for us, not necessarily points you're going to say to the kids. Um, so the first one is that rectangles with whole numbers will have an even perimeter. So that's like the general rule um, that we're starting with, is that anything with a whole number, when doubled, is going to get us to um, an even number. So even like an odd number, when we double it, is still going to be even. Um, <clears throat> Um, so that's the first one. The second one, you can have length and width that include half and fourth measurements. Um, I drew like an example of how we get to an odd number in my book. So like four and a half, one, four and a half, and one is going to get us to 11. Um, the third one, when you include half and fourth or fractions, there are more add-ins for a given perimeter. Um, so like including them means that we're going to get to, like, like I said, an infinite number of rectangles we could get to with, with that. And then the last one, there is no relationship between area and perimeter, and that just kind of closes the, the lesson out. Um, and that's something that they should be okay with, because we've kind of already talked about stuff like that. All right, so there's no application problem today, so I kind of envision the lesson being exit ticket review, um, fluency practice, and then you just dive right in. Um, there's three things for the concept development. The first is problem one, where they're actually drawing the line plot. Um, so I made an anchor chart of that um, data tracker, and so we're going to fill it out, and then we're going to the students are going to make their line plots. I'm not having them use a ruler because I didn't have them use a ruler before, and I didn't want it to be a confusing thing. Because problem one should literally take five minutes to to plot. Um, so how many people have been <coughs> keeping their tracker? Of the area, the perimeters you've been doing yesterday and today. You're supposed to keep a class tracker right. mm -hmm. of everyone's perimeters. Mm -hmm. You've been doing that. Yes. One for the class. Yes. Okay. Great. Yeah. <laughs> you want to just be careful. This could end up being a reteach lesson mm -hmm. on line plots. Mm -hmm. It's oh. not that yeah. drawing the line plot is supposed to be a, like a two minute activity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you're going to use that idea to build the rest of the lesson. And we said we could like make a copy of it if it's paper and then pass it off. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Or like Jen made a giant poster. Yeah. Great. Either one. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Know. Sit down. Um, so you're, then you're going to talk about. So then after you've done the line plot, problem two is the, like the notice of the line plot. So talking about the line plot, what do you notice? That's the big question for the students. What do you notice? All of our rectangles are even. Right. All of our um, Perimeters, excuse me, I shouldn't say rectangles. All of our perimeters are even. Um, and so then we talk about th that second rule, that when we add whole number side lengths and double them, the perimeter will be even. Um, once you do get that, like, mini teaching point across, mm -hmm. then you're going to pass out the 11-inch um, long piece of string. Have them measure your, um, it's one, one per partner group. So it's not one per kid, but they're working in partners. So the, the nice thing about this lesson is it's like teacher work, partner work, teacher work, partner work. Um, so um, pass them out, have them measure it. They find out that it's 11 inches. And then they're going to work with their partner to shape it into a square, um, which is harder than or it looks. Or a rectangle. Looks. Or a rectangle, yeah, 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 which is harder than it looks. But what I'm going to have them do is once they've done that, I'm going to have them trace it onto a piece of paper. So then it's much easier to measure the side lengths because um, it's a little hard to do with the string. 
So once they do that, then they'll draw it on a piece of paper, and then they measure to find out how long each side is. And they measure to the nearest quarter inch. Um, and you tell them that, measure to the nearest quarter inch. And um, once they've done that, they find out that you know, the sides have quarter inches, and then they have to try to add it up. And of course, you've told them that this is 11 inches, so they should, when you ask them what the perimeter is, should automatically know that it's 11 inches. Yeah, without you might, add. but you might want to make that clear. So mm -hmm. we know the perimeter is 11, and I think you, you know, said this first point about like we notice that all of our perimeters are even. Mm -hmm. You want to make that really explicit because that's like the foundation of saying, of, well, now, now it's odd. let's see what happens when we have an odd perimeter. Yeah. Exactly. And you're going to introduce this new vocabulary. We get fraction side lengths. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's like the big one here is that students will discover that a rectangle with an odd perimeter has half and quarter inch sides, or it will have half and quarter inch side fractions. Um, so once they've done that, um, you'll discuss that the rectangle has an odd perimeter because the side lengths aren't whole numbers. Because remember the rule is if it's whole numbers and doubled, it's going to be even. So then um, if it's odd, it's 11 inches, it has to have uh, fractional numbers. Um, now we're going to look back at the line plot. So I, I was thinking like I would keep the track of the line plot and then as well as the students and then I just pop one under the dot camera so we can like refer back to it. Um, now study the data on your line plot. Think of a true statement to share about the data. So basically we're talking about um, that we're going by even numbers, we're count um, skip counting there, that we have the fewest rectangles with 10 and the most with 20. So they should be able to see the pattern of, um, get, for, of it getting bigger. Uh, so then with more measurements, so then the template that they gave you, I'll stick that, um, stick that under my dot camera, so that goes from 4 all the way to 30. And they should be able to see now the pattern of, um, in pairs of 2, it moves up by 1. So like 4 and 6 have 1, 8 and 10 have 2, 12 and 14, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, with then the thinking question of using the same, once we discover the pattern, once we like talk about what the pattern is, using that pattern, um, what are 32 and 34? Like how many are they going to have? How many rectangles will they have without ever having to measure? We just know that it's going to follow this pattern. So then eight rectangles, of course. Um, then we're going to cut the string. So they're going to measure. So this string. is like part three this, almost. Yeah. Um, they're going to measure the string out. They're going to measure it to 10. And then they're going to cut off an inch. So that their string is now 10 inches long. Um, then you'll give out that um, the rectangle template with the four rectangles on it. Um, have them measure the rectangles with this to discover that all four rectangles have a measurement of 10. And then, of course, you're asking them, you know, how is it possible that all four of these have a measurement of 10? When we did it, we only found two, mm -hmm. right? Because they need to understand that with whole numbers, there is only two possibilities. But when we're using fractions, we can get more. So you're coming back to that point now again using mm -hmm. an even perimeter. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense, you guys? Mm -hmm. So you really need to like lay that foundation of like how many rectangles did we have when mm -hmm. before two for a ten inch. Yeah. So now let's see how many we have. Mm -hmm. So I, I envision that being like cut your string, measure with your string, measure with your ruler to actually get the um, like the actual lengths with quarter inch, and then notice the number of rectangles um, that we have that get to ten um, with fractional. Uh, side lengths. And then the last part is a compare with um, Tuesday's line plot, which was the area line plot. Again, I'm just going to pop my example under the dot cam. Um, so let's compare today's line plot, which they should have, with mm -hmm. the one we did on Tuesday. Allow students to take their time to like really look at the two. And the, the big question is, um, like, is there anything that's the same, right? Is there anything that looks the same? Is there anything that's patterned between the two that matches? Um, of course, there's not really a pattern. There's really no pattern to the area one. Um, and so, you know, I had several kids who were like, oh, all the even number or all the odd numbers only have one rectangle and until we got to 15, and then they're like, oh, wait, so that's not, so there's really no pattern for area. Um, so then using, we can say that the general rule is there's no connection between perimeter and area. Right. Perimeter has nice patterns all laid out, area doesn't. Um, and then this is just like a logistical thing that I'm a little 
you know, OCD about. I'm going to really make sure my kids know that all their partner work should be on one side of their desk and all their teacher work should be on the other side of their desk so that we're not getting it confused because we're kind of going back and forth between working with a partner and working with the teacher. Um, because really what you're working with is that problem set. You're doing um, one and two and three together and then they need to do four and five independently. Um, so, which is good because I think like, the, like really fleshing out how to do the language with the kids for the written responses is something I'm noticing is, is like a taxing thing, right? Like they don't mm -hmm. necessarily know how to put it all into words. So doing some of those together before they have to do two on their own, which are also written responses. Mm -hmm. um, the exit ticket for, uh, for this one, don't set them up with it at all, right? Like you've already given them all the information they really need. But this is basically a kind of like a cold call BCR, right? right. Like, put it yeah. for them. You pointed out something really interesting when we talked about this, which is like, we don't even discuss this yeah. structure. We've never done this structure. Like, do you see how lesson. Jen Jen used a number bond and a picture to represent an explanation, right? We're not practicing that at all. Mm -hmm. That's something that we're hoping our kids are going to like bring to the table mm -hmm. by giving them a question that's like not rote. We're asking mm -hmm. them to kind of. So, this isn't, don't. Don't like teach to this exit slip. Yeah. Teach to this exit slip in the idea, like concept wise, but not like Work I'm gonna wise. give you a format. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's that's where the challenge comes, right? Because everything we've done so far this week is like, here's how I want you to do it, and the exit slip looks just like what we did. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, this one's more conceptual. Awesome.